Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 29th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I did a little experiment late last week where I rigged my DVR that is vulnerable to the infamous Mirai exploit to just reboot every five minutes in order to allow it to be continuously exploited. So the exploit we're talking about here is the default password for root that is XC3511. And ever since Mirai sort of popularized that particular attack, we have seen a never ending stream of infected systems looking for more bots. Now I call these attacks Mirai, it's really dozens of different botnets and variations of this basic exploits that pretty much do the same thing. They try a small number of popular passwords in order to take over these systems. Using my small business uh, cable modem connection with five IP addresses, it took about two minutes between exploits for this DVR. So what this really comes down to is that uh, these kind of exploits are still alive and well, as far as I can tell, based on some Shodan data, the sources of these scans are pretty much other vulnerable systems that got taken over by different uh, botnets. Sadly, there's very little that the end user can do about this. Uh, for example, for the DVR that I'm using, I still haven't found a firmware update yet, and there's nothing that you can do configuration-wise in order to disable that backdoor password. So really, the only thing you can do is put these devices behind a firewall, and cross your fingers that we don't have anything behind the firewall that will start scanning for this vulnerability. And Intel's management engine that's included in many modern systems has caused, of course, some security concerns in the past, either via vulnerabilities or the ability to access systems via this feature or just its use as a covert channel. Now, given all of these security issues, of course, a lot of people have looked into disabling this feature, but sadly, many of these attempts have not worked out because this particular feature is also used during the boot of the system. Well, uh, positive technologies now came up with an interesting way to enable uh, this particular feature after the hardware is initialized and the main processor starts. So at this point, this feature isn't strictly speaking needed, but there wasn't really a good way to turn it off. So what they found out is it's actually possible to switch the management engine into a specific mode that disables most of its function functionality and apparently it cannot be turned off once it's in that mode. So you will be able to reduce the attack surface significantly if you're applying this trick. Now, Positive Technologies has all the details in how to accomplish this, including a GitHub repository, I believe, with some of the code. Of course, there are no guarantees here. There is a chance that you will actually irrecoverably damage your system by applying this workaround. And a number of technology firms cooperated in order to take down a pretty active DDoS botnet, botnet WireX. Now, what was sort of a little bit special about this botnet was that it did infect Android devices. We haven't really seen a lot of Android devices being used for denial of service attacks, but certainly there are enough of them out there and they do have enough bandwidth in order to be quite capable in this role. To get infected with this particular bot, an Android user actually had to install the malware on their phone. It was, at least for a short time, distributed via the Google Play Store. As usual, it was attached to a wide range of different applications. Uh, they mention here media and video players, ringtones and the like came with uh, this particular payload as an add-on. 
There were a total of 300 applications that uh, were infected uh, with uh, this uh, particular uh, bot. It all started early August and August 17th is when the attacks were observed. One little special thing here is that the user agent was essentially just a random string, so should be relatively easy to identify attack devices based on that string. But then again, other times it actually used the user agent that looked more regular. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.